Hi, this is Kai He, a visiting student in the Cincinnati team. Today, I would like to introduce our latest research. This work has been published in the IEEE Transaction on Effective Computing 2022, which entitled Meta-Based Self-Training and Revating for Aspect-Based Sentiment Analysis. First, let's see what is a task, aspect, based sentiment analyze. This task is an entity-oriented and a fine-grounded task. The task consists of the three subtasks, including expect term extraction, opinion extraction, and expect level sentiment classification. For example, given a sentence, the restroom is crowded but with the effective and accuracy servers. We aim to collect the triplets. The first one is a crowded restaurant with negative emotion. And the second triplet is a efficient accuracy servers with positive sentiment. Such the fine grounded sentiment analyze can help to recognize, interpret, and simulate human emotions better. And it can also support many downstream applications, such as a processed recommendation system and intelligence dialogue system. The above three subtasks usually are formulated as a multi-task problem, and each subtask is a sequence talking task. This kind of formulation cause our training data become more efficient and in balance. This is because the target others usually dominated the sequence talking task. And if three sequence talking tasks are organized into the one model task, one multi-task models, it will make it worse. So our solution is self-training, which can generate the pseudo-labeled data to elevate the problem. Additionally, when applying self-training, we also need to focus on the three extra issues. The first one is the generated pseudo-labeled data needs smaller weights to elevate node inference. The second is classes with a few annotated instances should be allocated with the large weights to help the model learn from the efficient data. The last one is considering the fact that the different subtasks have different commercial rates and importance. These subtasks may need a different weight to be coordinately comprehensive. Uh, this is overview of the proposed method which consists of the three components, a teach model, a student model, and a matter waiter. First, we use the golden data to train in the teach model. After the training in this step, the teach model can generate some of the pseudo label for unlabeled data set. And we compare the golden data with this pseudo labeled data to form a large data set namely mixed pseudo label and golden label data set as shown in the picture for training the student model. And this student model is our final model. It should notice that we have a revating process when we train the student model. It's named TMU training. TMU training is used for revating each instance a mixed pseudo label and golden label data. This training is a three step process for allocating the task specific weights for each input. In the first step of the TMU training, we input the mixed pseudo label and golden label data to student model. And the loss of the student model in this time step, time step zero, is regarded as the inputs to our meta waiter to generate the related weights. 
we use the weighted loss to update the student model from the time step zero to time step one. And where the meta weighter is not updated in this time step, the goal of this step is to prepare a student model for time step two and only for that. In the second step, we only input the golden data to student model and the meta weighter. With the golden data and the updated student model, we can update the meta weighter in this time step, time step two. The goal of this step is to update the meta weighter without the inference from the noise pseudo label data. In the last step, we input the mixed pseudo label and golden label data again to student model. It should notice that we use the student model in time step zero here rather than use the student model in time step two. This is because the student model in time step two is updated with the noise data. So the student model may have been misleading by the noise. For such reason, we use the student model in time step zero and uh, update the meta waiter in time step two to finish this final training step. By such a progress, we can elevate the inference from the noise pseudo data at most. And we carry out the experiment in the three data sites to demonstrate our method, restaurant 14, laptop 14, and the restaurant 15. All these data sets come from the same EVA evaluation. As shown in the table, the tag others exceed the 19% in all these three data sets. The imbalance distribution is very obvious. And that's the main reason why we need self-training and reweighting. This is our results. Compared with the some recent baseline, our method achieved the satisfies the results. Since our method is a based self-training, we expand its performance with the different amounts of the manually annotated data. It should notice that the benchmarking baseline adopts the all label data of the corresponding data site, where we reported our performance with the data site in the 10%, 30%, and 15%. Additionally, we also test our method with the 17% and 100% of data with the extra unlabeled data set argumentation. The purpose of the introducing the unlabeled data set augmentation is that the more unlabeled data can help the learning of the student model and the meta waiter. Uh, it can be seen that 17% and 100% of the labeled data have been implied in these setups. So the, let, the left the unlabeled data is not enough for this two setup. Uh, Similarly, we use the 15% the training data to achieve the comparable performance of the state of art models and even outperform them with the all labeled data. We also explain the utilities of the different components and the effects from the number of the label and unlabeled data. As shown in the figure four, our method can stably improve the FE measure according to the all improved label data reads from the 10% to the 15%. The biggest gap between with and without unlabeled data appear in using the 13% labeled data in restaurant the 15 data site, which counting for the 4.81%. For the restaurant 14 and the laptop 14, the most prominent improvements are given by the 3.18% with the 50% of label data and the 4.15% with the 20% label data, respectively. Uh, our method with the 10% 10 label, 10 label data displayed a limited enhancement for the label laptop 14 and the rest of the 15 data sites. By using the more than 20 labeled data, the improvements becomes apparently. 
This is because only use a 10% label data is hard to supervise a usable teacher model. The teacher model also needs an effective utilization to start. And in the last, considering that our mental waiter aims to automatically learn the different waiting strategy under different conditions, we realize the generated weights and compare them with a three typical manually weighting method. This results showing how the meta waiter can learn the different weight distribution for different soft tasks in different data sites. It will be the more flexible compared with the method which need manually design the different weight strategy for different tasks. Yeah, that's all. And then the more details can see in our paper. Thanks for your attention.